Howdy, Derek here, and today we're going to be tying the double jig rig. This is a rig that I've been using for years, whether it was down on the river and I was catching crappie and bluegill and bass and catfish, all on this same rig, about two to three foot deep under a bobber. But you can fish this rig deep as well. You can put a slip bobber on it, and you can throw that thing out there and set your depth to whatever you want. But the cool thing about it is you've got two different presentations. You want to have your heavier jig, which this one right here is a 1 16th ounce. And this one right here is actually a 1 32nd. So you want to put that lighter jig up above. And I've got some braided line, which is what I like to use for here in Texas. Because a lot of the water is not crystal clear a lot of the times. And if it was crystal clear, I'd probably be using a monofilament or a fluorocarbon. But not in this case. So 10 pound braid, this is just some cheap spider wire that I've actually got that I used down on the creek for bluegill, but I've got this jig right here, and this is what I like to do for mine whenever I tie them. Not everybody ties them the same. I don't like to do the loop knot, and there's a reason behind that. I take one of these that I got this from Walmart, if it will focus in on that. I got that actually from Walmart, and that's how it comes right there. But what I like to do is I like to take the head of where the tie-in is right here, and I like to bend it forward. So if you look at this one, I've already, I've already bent it. Now look at the difference in how those are. You see how this one is a lot further forward? I just bent it forward a little bit and pinched on the weight to keep it in that position. Now that is critical for the way that I fish it. I don't like to put a loop knot on this one. Now I take my line. And I basically loop it down through here. Oh, if it'll go through. I loop it through, and what I like is the improved clinch knot. And there's a reason behind that. I am actually, I've been bass fishing for years, and I've been using the improved clinch knot. I don't worry about the Palomar or anything else. And all I do is I just run it through, and so I've got that loop. So now I just wrap it five times. One, two, three four, five. All right, and then I take it back through this little loop that we created right there. And then pinch it. And now we've got another knot, another little loop if you see here. So we just take that tag in and run it back through that loop. And now start to pull it tight. I gave it way too much, but just cinch it down. Pull the tag in so that knot all kind of comes together. And on braid, you got to be careful because it can catch and it'll actually make a loop knot if you're not careful. Now, you just cinch it down just like that. Now, if you want something to look more, more like a bait fish, now look at how that is sitting. It's sitting off to the side. See how that's sitting off to the side like that? That is what you don't want. So what we're going to end up doing here just like a drop shot in bass fishing, it keeps the, the lure to where it kind of sits horizontal, just like a minnow would, not a minnow sitting up and down vertically. So you just come back to the, come back to the eyelet and you run your, your other line that you're going to be tying the other hook onto right back through there. Let's see if we did this correctly and then pull it down. And what that kind of does is it kind of makes it more of a vertical presentation, whether it's sitting on the side or not. I mean, look at how much better that is. It's sitting just like that. It's not completely vertical, but you can actually play with the knot on the line and kind of pull it like that. And it will set that thing to where it's almost at a vertical position. And I've never really had it, let's see right there, I've never really had any issues with one of these and the way that they catch fish, if it does do anything, I've never had an issue with that, with not having a loop knot on that first little jig. Now we're going to go down to the bottom. So we're going to give ourselves about two foot here. We're going to take our other hook and we're going to tie another improved clinch knot. Now we're gonna do the same thing. You make that little loop and you just wrap it five times. One, two, three, four, five. 
and then take it back through the little hole you made and then back through the big loop and just pull it tight uh, and there it is and then pull your tag in and I don't worry about the loop knot the action that I like to do is actually my own action by you know popping the bobber and doing whatever but as you see here this one's kind of sitting more vertical than it would. Uh, I don't trust the loop knot. It, it can be all over the place. It can provide more action when the bait is actually sitting still, but I don't really worry about that. And then this one will just sit just like that. It'll sit perfectly in the water. So you don't really have to worry about it with it being like that. So now we've got our setup and we can go fishing. Now this one's about two foot difference. So above this, you would just set your bobber above the lighter jig, whatever depth, if it's a set bobber or a slip bobber, and go fishing and just pop that bobber along and it'll just basically pick it up and flutter these back down. You put on jigs or grubs or, or any kind of like curly tail or just about any kind of profile that's gonna mimic a bait fish will be perfect on the ends of these jigs but let me know what, how you guys time if you do the loop knot or prefer the loop knot for a certain reason i'd love to hear from you guys but thanks for watching you guys and subscribe if you haven't already like this video if you liked it and i'll see you guys in the next one